Mm-hmm. And what you're talking about with zero trust is that every actor in your environment, whether human or some kind of machine, yep. needs to have a a verifiable identity, which mm-hmm. it can then offer whenever it requests access to something else in that mm-hmm. network. Yep. So we're talking not just about human beings needing some higher level of um, verifiable identification. Mm -hmm. So multi-factor, for example, Um, we're also talking about the individual servers or devices, drones, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever that is in that network that's going, Hey, can I have this piece of data or can I go and do this thing to this server over here? Yes. All of that is what zero trust is trying to kind of create if you like is the fact that you need to have this identity it has to be verified and once that happens you can then start making uh decisions about well is this thing actually authorized to to access that resource or read that email or right that piece of data or whatever so i think it's huge um it's been coming for a while Mm because this all kind of kicked off when president biden issued his executive order in May 2021. Um, And then after that, um, in fact, January this year, there was a federal memorandum to talk about specifically the zero trust um, strategy at a complete federal level. Mm -hmm. And this is the DOD's kind of response to that, where they're starting to sort of flesh it out what this means for the DOD. Um, and it will affect all of the departments. Uh, and yeah. they've, you know, made it very clear that it's going to affect everybody. And and I, you know, the, the document I think is is a reasonable start. You know, it's got they've defined what they're expecting to see, albeit yeah. a very high level. Um, and they've put some timelines in there. You know, they divided it into things like users and data and applications and devices and you can see these target timelines and then the advanced Mm -hmm. and they've specified again at a high level what this actually means um and then they've left it up to the departments to go and figure out how on earth they're going to do it right well yeah it sounds an awful lot like uh the cmmc 2.0 uh requirements that kind of were finally finalized earlier this year you know and one of our guests said that there's like something like 300,000 vendors that are being given mere months to achieve compliance but there's only a few hundred auditors available to take on the work so this is a little more self-directed i'm imagining where it's like you there's not necessarily someone that's going to have to come in and audit your particular portion of the system it's more like uh, the implementation i imagine is is maybe a little more um internal is that right yes no absolutely um so so i think it is different to to the idea where you're basically insisting that a supplier has to get to a certain standard of cybersecurity and be externally audited to that fact right um that being said it will be interesting to see how it works out in practice um yeah. And how many exceptions they're going to have, because obviously you've got if you've got a legacy system that has absolutely no chance of, Mm -hmm. let's say, integrating some kind of single sign on mechanism, then what are you going to do? You you need to create an exception and justify why it still exists on the network Uh and what the mitigations are. Um, And and. This is the same, to be honest, as as private sector. I mean, the banks that I work for have exactly the same issues. How about some free cybersecurity training resources for you and your team? Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to get ebooks, training guides, and more than 100 cybersecurity training courses, all free for cyber work listeners. Go to infosecinstitute.com slash free and start learning crucial new skills today.